Hello there, YouTubers. We got to take the starter out. Can't seem to, there it goes. It's up in here. I, I don't know why they put it in such a difficult place to get to, but that really doesn't look difficult as if it was in a, a car. So I'm gonna kind of put along with that a little bit. I don't have but half my tools here, maybe even a quarter of my tools, because I've got them spread all over everywhere. But first thing I'm gonna do, uh, as I do that ground wire, I see all my all my adjustables are in different locations than back here, so I might have to find the right size uh, nut to take that off. And I, I don't remember what size this is. I think, well, smaller than that. There you go. Goes to show you how unprepared I was. I have to go to smaller size, maybe a five eighths. That that kind of looks like it could be a five eighths. I think it's eleven sixteenths. Yeah, it's eleven sixteenths. Go figure. Anyhow, let's see if that's what it is. Yeah, well, we'll start with taking the battery uh, apart. I have two uh, ground wires, which I'll mark. I generally like to take the uh, ground ones off first. Um, can't find my marker. I'll forget which goes what. I mean, you got these here are marked real good with red, so I'll just put some black black on them just because you know I just don't feel like getting it messed up when I put it back together. But I could probably do that anyway because I'm good at uh, doing that. Now I generally like to take the ground ones off first because uh, then if you're swinging with a wrench and you hit the frame. You're not going to sparkle. Now we'll take this positive one off. This is not the best battery in the world here. This is a real old battery. I, didn't, I don't. I mean, it is the best battery, but it's not. Might not be the best battery if you follow that. It's one I've had for ten years or so. There might be a date on it. We'll put these those wires there. Go to the starter. I probably should have taken them off at the starter, but I didn't. Let's get that out of the way. Oh my goodness! And it is heavy. But everything about this sawmill is heavy. Um, might be better off having you guys over here. Let me see what this thing seems to pick up light pretty good. Put you down a little bit. That's where I'm going to. I guess we'll take this ground wire off of here. Uh, of course, that's not going to be the same size, you know that. We kind of figured that out, didn't we? Uh, let's see. I got a three quarter here. I think it might be. I think those might be three quarter. But yeah, this thing has been sparkling out a little bit too much when uh, when it starts up and not starting slow. Some of it is. Some of the slowness is the. Uh, battery I don't think is the strongest battery in the world the one that was in here I took it out and put it up on the charger because it was uh, going slow and what I what I thought was maybe the battery was uh, I had I had a charger on there and if the charger's not working one way it's working the other way in my opinion I don't know anyhow we're, we're just getting there I'm just rambling oh that that bad boy there is too tight for this old guy. I would have marked that in red except for I didn't bring my red marker and those yellow ones seem to work pretty good. So we'll just leave it in yellow. Of course I could have a ratchet. I mean I got the whole whole ratchet set over there. That would be too simple. And the starter is going to be just a little heavy. Probably heavier than I can pick up. Got the mandrel down at Jeffrey's yesterday. That was pretty crashed. That was, uh, I think it was that way when I got it. I, I know it was loose. I don't know what all was screwed up when it when I got it. I know it was loose when I got it. Oh, that helps to drop. It helps to drop some of your parts because then it gives you something to look for. So that that's always a helpful thing. So we'll take that that off. We'll take that off there you go I drop the battery and take that off I make all my own battery cables buy these 
I guess you're on there, solder them on, then put tape or shrink tubing on there. Here's the uh, one lead that powers everything. Now I just got to find that little one there. I don't know what size that is, but I know it's little. Hopefully I got one in the box. Be back in a minute. I did what every good redneck mechanic does just buy bring a whole bunch in there sooner or later one one should fit I was going if I'd been prepared which I never accused of being prepared um, I would have look at that first guess I mean first one uh, if I was prepared I would have had all these wrenches sitting aside to do the job but I'm not that good but what this title, the title of this movie is, well, maybe I should have two titles, taking a starter out of a 671 Detroit. But the wildest camera, I was watching Mark last night and uh, on the uh, that live stream, which I always find that interesting. He does a real good job of that. And, uh, man, he must have improved about a million percent. He definitely gets an A for last night because... Uh, the, the sound was a lot better than it was the week before. He must have tickled the right wire. So we'll take that off. That might be the one that gets the whole shoe bang going. And that's the only one I didn't mark. So I'll probably forget which that is. So theoretically this should come out of here now. Yeah, theoretically. I'll tell you, that's the famous last words. I, um, let me see. I can't, I don't think I can lower you down anymore because of the, um, because of the way uh, the tripod is so lacking but I might be able to get a little bored and put you in there and you can see what's going on oh, uh, where am I at time wise got to keep an eye on that I'm at seven minutes I'm hanging in there uh, let me see if I can find a little chunk of wood of course you got a sawmill you never find a chunk of wood that's just a major impossibility I went and bought a uh, chipper. I've been kicking a chip, kicking chippers around for uh, who knows how long. Let me show you that real quick before I run out of time. And this whole movie was to show you my wireless mic or how to make a wireless mic. So I'm fluttering around like a ping pong ball in a wind tunnel. That's a chipper I just got. I was looking at tractor driven chippers. I was looking at this and looking at that. And this, this I got what I will hope to find out is a, was a reasonable price. The fender's bent a little bit, but it, that thing, if I ever do it, it's just bent down there. If I take that off, I can think I can bend it straight, but you might have to take some of these wires off. The wires are a little goofy. The um, battery's dead, which that goes to show you, goes to things. Anyhow, this is the uh, chipper I got. It's got a big, big mouth there. Because uh, I want to chip up all those chips back at the sawmill and what it was going to cost me to rent a chipper I was looking at buying a PTO Woodland Mills. There, there's so many of them out there that are nice But they'd only take up to 8 inch and then you're maxing out my tractors uh, horses so I kind of um, Well, I didn't didn't pull the trigger on that. I don't I'm gonna see here if, if I can if you can see what I'm dealing with uh, I'll put a wrench underneath this is the um, proper way of aligning your camera. And maybe you can kind of see what I'm going after. Of course, there's going to be, uh, where was I? I was on a chipper. Um, to go rent one, I thought it was going to take me more than uh, uh, one day to get all that stuff out. So that, and it's like... 600 bucks a day or something like that oh my goodness yeah we might have a problem here Houston um, definitely got a problem that's a backup ground we ain't getting that out real quick 
I guess they if you get if you get them right in the right position you can put another wrench on it that got that one loose I'm sure that anybody who work with tools knows about putting a wrench on a wrench to make a wrench longer oh, even still this this bears there we go that's not too bad but there's still one in the back I'm sure that you can't can't see just barely feel of course you know there is which I guess for a starter this size is a good plan car starters generally don't have that many of course it's out of time for this wrench uh, where'd all these spider webs come from anyhow so I went ahead and pulled the trigger on that chipper there I'm trying to find this bolt uh, I don't think it exists yeah it's not in the it's not in the timing this is a 12 pointer yeah it's not in the timing of either of those so I gotta go get a different wrench so much for being uh, prepared yeah that'll come out fine this one here will come out fine I don't want to loosen them too much. Let me, uh, I think I got a ratchet in here. No, it's out on detail. Hmm. Ratchet's out on detail right now. I might have another 916th wrench that has a different timing spot on it though. Uh, 916th. If this one's got a different timing spot, got a spot on it, but it's so short, I might not uh, be able to get on it. Of course, somebody might have a regular bolt on there. No, it's a star bolt. These things are like 12 point, um, nah, it's, well, it's on. Let's see if I can do the old double, double break your arm thing here. It's not in a good spot. Ugh crush my phone just then better take my phone out of my pocket of course then I won't be able to find the phone there's so much oil down here I'm gonna flip this around if I can get it to go the other way it will be a lot less messy on me Nah, I ain't got no stroke there and if I go can't get it to go on that way uh, maybe it's going on yeah it went on I'm dealing with uh remember when that rear main oil seal was leaking that's all black from oil I think I'll go look in the uh, Kubota it's got just about one of everything in it and I can generally do just about all my jobs Get yeah, most of my stuff done with uh, what's in the back of there. I, I got a good tool selection up at the house, but I don't really like to get into that uh, unless I got to. I think this wrench will hold that from going too far, and this one will hold it from going too far this way. Of course, then I won't have one to pull on that, which is, uh, here we go. Guys, that, that bad boy is in there. I can't uh, make it go. I'll get this one here to be longer. But it's got a crooked neck on it. Might not might not go in. It doesn't want to go in the way I need it to go in. Let me see what else I got in the wrench department.
This one here is a bit longer. Uh, of course, I should have put a rubber pad down where my knees are. Let's see what we can do with this. I'm underneath now. Woo! Can you see that? You guys can't see that. Ah, I think it came loose. Did you hear the snap, crackle, pop? I still can't find that bolt though. There it is. Yeah, it's coming out. About a quarter turn at a time. Now I gotta go up to Frederick. Got bearings. This this gets dropped off in Frederick at a place that I've been dealing with since 1978. And uh, I'm hoping the place is still there. They were there not too long ago. I took something up there. I don't I think the maybe the starter out of the tractor when that was giving me all the problem. Um, let's see here. Can't get my hand to twist that way. That's what we call now nah, I got it. A tweener bolt. Tweener bolt is a bolt that's too tight for your fingers and too loose for a wrench. But it seems like I'm getting there. I'm supposing this thing's going to just drop on the ground because I just don't see myself doing anything but dropping it on the ground. So I'll get a couple rubber pads. That takes care of that one. Uh, we'll take care of this one. I'll loosen the top one a little bit. In fact, maybe I'll take the top one out because this, this one here is easier. The starter should stay in there really, theoretically. Anyhow, that's about half. What are we doing time-wise here? We're still 17. Heck, I still got a long, some long time. I, I'm gonna on machining that uh, mandrel. I'm gonna probably put a lot of shorts on. Not wear shorts. It's it's too. It's not. Sh it's not short. Yeah, this is a tweener bolt. Ah, there I got it with my fingers. I wish I knew how to hold this thing up. I just don't see me me doing that. Wow. That thing gonna be heavy. I bet that thing weighs 50 pounds, which you know, I don't think I've ever had this one out. I've had so many out, I don't I don't keep track of them. <sighs> Number two extraction complete. I think um, this thing's going to be somehow. I got an idea. Don't know whether it'll work. I've got to find a board. Just happened to have a board in the back of the truck. I don't know whether this is going to work or not. But it sure looks like it might. I just got to kind of conform myself to this board. If I get it, uh, it doesn't want to come out. Maybe it won't crash on the ground. I'm all the way up against the oil pan. I think in a non non angular position I might be able to handle this starter a little easier but I'm half bent over and now theoretically it should just come out of course it's going to get heavy all of a sudden man I wish I had somebody else to hold this board can you guys come give me a hand real quick that's a hot that's a oil that's a fuel pump line let it down a little bit that fuel line is getting in my way one starter R&R &R. 
Woo. Old boy's out of breath, but that ain't too bad. I'm hoping that just maybe something losing contact in here because the sparks come flying out of it. And there's no real place for sparks to come flying out of it. So maybe the connection is just bad there or bad here. Or, I don't know. Just take them up and look at it. I, and let a professional look at it. I, I'm not a professional. There's that board I used if you couldn't really see it in there. Now I'm going to get back to what the movie's all about. I think it's about a bird's pooping location. That's all they do is they sit up there in them rafters and poop all over my pretty woodwork. And I'm not a good woodworker. Anyhow, let's put this up to where maybe you can see me. Got to get some grease off my hands because I don't want to hurt the delicate electronics I'm about to work with. And I know I'm forgetting some other stuff because I always forget some stuff, but I do have a list there of stuff sitting in bird poop. Man, that doesn't look like I'm in there. I'm up to, I'm up to that six inch thing there. Have to look to see if I'm up to that six inch thing. Nope, I was cutting my head off, wasn't I? There, I think I'm in there now. Anyhow, when I was watching Mark on his uh, live stream y yesterday, it was great. That, I think that works so good. Maybe someday I'll learn how to do a live stream because I'm not a good typer, so I type you guys back and I try to answer all the things. But not only do I hit the wrong button half the time, but when I hit the wrong button, the word goes bananas. So you're sitting there going, what in the world did I just type? So it's a lot easier to just explain everything. You know, somebody asking him a question, he can answer it right there. And I, I, think, I think that's uh, the way to go. I'm not going to get there two, two times soon. First, I've got to learn how to edit. But, but there's talking about, uh, I need a wireless mic, I need a wireless mic, and I thought about it all night long, and I said, I can make a wireless mic. That's not a problem. So I, I look through all my stuff, and the next thing I know, I come up with a wireless, wireless mic idea. Anyhow, you, you can make it at home, inexpensive, because I'm a pack rat. It, it, just, it just fit in all the way. And I said that I would have a wireless mic on the next video I did. So here's what we're gonna do. I found this old CB radio. Found the CB radio. Look at what that is. That's a microphone. But the problem with that microphone is it has a wire. You can't see all the mud in this stuff. This was just sitting, fell off a table in the barn and been in the mud for 10 years. Look at that. Now what I told everybody I would have is a wireless mic on the next time I did a video. I gotta go up to that six inch board. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make a wireless mic with cheap side cutters. <laughs> Breaker, 10-4, I'm at the sawmill. Can you come down and give me a hand? I gotta take the starter out. Ain't nobody answering. Hey, I'm at the sawmill. I need some help. Can anybody come down? Hmm. Here's how you make a wireless mic. It's a wireless mic now. It's got a little, it, this, this might be the antenna. I'll make it a shorter. That is a wireless mic. So I kept my promise. I would have a wireless mic at the next YouTube video I made. Hello? Hello? Earth to alien. Earth to home. Anybody out there? You can't listen on them either. Doesn't seem to work too well. Might be the mud on it. Maybe it needs cleaning off a little bit. Hello? Hello? Go figure. I just don't understand what's the problem with things these days. I've got a wireless mic and it rattles too. Can you hear that? Must be good if it rattles. Can you hear that? Anyhow, I'm getting ready to go up, get cleaned up, believe it or not. I do clean up a little. Oh, I broke my belt yesterday. I got to fix that too. But I'm a pack rat. That, I think that'll be an all right fix. I don't think I'm going to bring you along. The, the loop that holds the belt in broke. And this, this belt's years and years and years and years old. Um... But I keep all my old boots, leather boots, and all that kind of stuff, so I just got to find a leather boot and make one. And I'll even reuse the staple that the guy used, because if it's been this good for probably 
15, 20 years, it's got to be good for a few more years. So, anyhow, that's that's what's kind of going on here today. I got the starter out. That's going up to Frederick. When I'm up in Frederick, I'm going to pick up the bearings. Uh, I got to drop by a package at the um, post office. Somebody bought some B8 shanks, and so I'm mailing those down to him. Um, what else is going on? Uh, the parts should be in this afternoon for the mandrel. I've called two places to get a price on a new mandrel, and I haven't, neither one of them gotten back with me, which is, that's fine. We're going to fix it anyway, or try to fix it. I do still have a backup mandrel in the back for that double lot. The reason I don't want to use that is that's a long mandrel. This is a short mandrel. It's not a long, long mandrel. It's a standard mandrel that comes on a double lot, so you can put a pulley outside the husk. This one here, if you've noticed, the pulleys, the, the adapter coupler is close. So if I make the, if I cut that other, if I cut that other one down to the length of this one, it can only be used on this mill, which is probably all right. But if I sell the mill and somebody wants to put a different setup on it, I don't know. It, it just, I, I don't want to cut that if I don't have to cut that. It, it's just not a good thing. This uh, sawmill here, I have two mandrels for because I went out to Indiana years ago and got another mandrel and stuff for that, which is kind of a crazy long story. Anyhow, we are done jabbering. You saw, saw this, saw that. We're 26, which is plenty long enough. <clears throat> oh, on these, a line in the dogs. <clears throat> got a frog or something in my throat. I think I might just let them stay where they are and worry about that down the road when I get into a headache with it because the mill in the back those are not in alignment in the mill in the back it's always frustrated me when i put the dogs down in but i've lived with it so long back there and i don't really see the adjustment i think the problem is in the casting and machining of these a little bit of this is wear there's no question on that somebody said why don't you just put a wear strip on the short ones like this one here is short to do that you have to take this whole unit back out, you have to go put it on a metal planer, which is not easy. Do all the setups, cut this flat, and you'd want at that point, take them all out because you want them all uniform. So then you'd cut them all flat to the same, to the same distance, put some type of wear strip on the front, which is what they do on all the mills now, which is all right, but then you're still dealing with this. And the casting of that and um, there's some some of those over there some of the pins are wore a little bit and I'm sure that there's a there's a thing on the you can't see it there's a little notch that goes down and fits in these grooves if that's war you have a can you see the play distance between here and here so I might down the road do something with it but right now I think I'm just gonna leave it as it is so anyhow that's a wrap on this one um, how to make a wireless mic how to take your starter out of your 671 Detroit, uh, dog alignment, and who knows what else. This afternoon i got to start working on grass because, as you can see, the grass is, this is over a foot tall here. i got a lot of grass that's over a foot tall, mainly up in the yard part. I don't really care about down here. You saw that. i got to order a, um, got to order a, cap for that it's missing a cap there was something on there when I got it I just took that off to measure it so um, anyhow that's it hit the like button hit the subscribe button send it to a friend and hit the bell if you want to see more of what's going on in this crazy spot thanks for stopping by over and out John